guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to be refinishing this hutch. So this piece is from the company Young Republic, which is from Indiana, and it is made out of maple wood. I'm going to begin by removing all of the hardware from the drawers and doors. As I take off those pieces, I like to put all of um, my hardware into a plastic uh, bucket that you'll see here in a second. That way I don't lose any of my pieces. Once the hardware is removed, we're going to go in with a damp paper towel and just remove any of that dust or grease that might be on your piece. My hutch had been sitting in the garage for a year, so I definitely had a lot to clean up. Now we are ready for the fun part, which is beginning to paint. No priming is required for most surfaces, and before you begin to paint, you just want to make sure that you stir your can thoroughly. You'll want to use a synthetic brush when applying the paint and a roller brush is not recommended. When brushing, you want to try to apply the paint with uh, even strokes and to avoid excess brushing. What I love about this paint is how good the coverage is. You can use just one coat or you can use up to three coats to get the desired look. I somehow get paint everywhere when I use painter's tape, so instead when I'm painting the cabinet door frame areas, I just use my favorite brush, uh, which I'm showing here, and I paint sideways into the door frame, and then I do uh, a straight coat down to make sure that the brush strokes are going in one direction. All right, here we have it with two coats of the Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Uh, you'll still notice that they that you can see the brush strokes, and especially here on the um, on the drawers. So I'm gonna go through and do a pretty light third coat, and then after I'm done with that, I will uh, probably distress it. These little tripods are super handy. They're especially helpful if you have to paint both sides of your door because then you don't have to wait for one side to dry. You can do them both at the same time. But right now I'm using them, I'm just painting the outside of my doors, but it also helps because now uh, my door is lifted and I don't have to worry about the paint getting on the floor. All right, the bottom is all done. We have all three coats on it. It's looking really good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint the top part. Still not entirely sure how I'm gonna go about doing it, what spots I'm gonna leave brown, but 
We'll see what we come up with. It is looking so good and I'm super excited. These um, glass doors on the side here, I'm a little bit worried about painting because the glass doesn't have the ability to come out. Usually if I had to paint a glass door, I would pop out the glass and then paint the wood, but there is no way this glass is coming out. So I'm just gonna have to paint this very, very, very carefully. I'm going to try to tape off the edging a little bit. Another idea I have is to kind of wedge in a index card, like a thick piece of paper, and then um, just try to paint the spots where I want paint, and then hopefully that will tape it off okay. I'm just worried if I try using the painter's tape, my tape will get stuck underneath the wood frame. Uh, which has happened to me before, unfortunately. So it's gonna be a little tricky. I'm gonna try a couple different things and see what I'm able to get to work. And for this, since I'm working with a really small area, I'm going to try these acrylic paint brushes. Usually I use my normal uh, paint brush, which you saw before, but I have these little craft brushes and I think since they're smaller, it'll be easier to use and in these small um, spots here. This part was very difficult to do, so I did it off camera, but this is showing the two glass doors that will be on the top of the hutch. I wasn't able to remove the glass pieces, so it was very hard to paint all around the edging. As you can see on some of these spots, it was hard to not get the paint to go through to the other side where I did not want it, so I'm gonna try a little bit harder to touch up there. But otherwise, they ended up coming out really good. I tried taping all around the edges as well as using like an index card to try to block off where I didn't want the paint. But what ended up working best for me was just um, using a thin brush and a steady hand to get all of these little corners. And so I just very slowly painted all of the edging and corners around these glass doors. It took a lot of time but this was easier for me than to tape it all off. And this is the brush that I used for these glass doors, and then in comparison to the normal brush that I use. I'm all done painting the hutch now, so all I have left is to go on top with my 220 grit sandpaper to make the paint nice and smooth, and then I will go on top with my protective clear coat finish. And for my top coat, I'm using this Rust-Oleum um, protective top coat specifically for the chalk paint. Um, I've used this on a couple of pieces of furniture before and I really liked it. So this is what we're gonna use. 
For sanding, I'm using 220 grit sandpaper. And then after I sanded over my surfaces a little bit, I go back over with my hand just to make sure that it's smooth to the touch. The corners are my favorite part to sand because that's when you can really see the distressing. So even just after a light sanding, you can see that the brown from uh, the original coloring is, it came through a little bit here, which I love that look. It gives it that rustic farmhouse type look. Um, so I'm going to leave it there. But the good part about this is if you don't like any of the sanding or the distressing, you just repaint that little area and then um, sand it again until you like it. A little bit of distressing goes a long way. I love the way it gives this piece a little bit more character. Like I said, you can sand it as much or as little as you want. I love the way it looks, especially on the drawers and doors because that's where you're naturally going to have the most use and where you would see natural distress. So just adding it with a little bit of sandpaper starts that look and gives it kind of that rustic farmhouse appeal that seems to be very popular now. I finished sanding. And I went, after I sanded, I went over with a damp paper towel about three times on the hutch, the drawers, and the doors, just because there was so much dust. Um, made sure to get everything off. So now that all the dust is removed, I can go on top with my protective top coat. For my top coat, I'm using this Rust-Oleum chalk paint uh, protective finish in the color matte clear. And when I apply this, I'm first going to apply a base coat, let that dry for eight hours. I'll probably do it and then let it dry overnight. And then I will apply my second coat, which will be my top coat. Any more layers after that just allow for two hours of dry time. It is all finished and I am super happy and excited about the results. I think it came out beautifully. I love the slight distressing throughout the piece. I think it really adds to the character of the hutch. And this is pretty cool too. This top drawer is a cutlery drawer and you got plenty of storage in the cabinets. It's just overall such a cute piece. You can put some plates propped up on here or down here. It's a two-piece hutch, so I'm really excited about this. Originally bought it at Goodwill for $50, and I'm going to list it for $350 on Facebook Marketplace, and I'll see what type of offers I get. This piece was super fun to do, super easy to. It was in really great condition to begin with except for when the Goodwill worker dropped one of the dresser drawers, but it was not broken, luckily. And, um, but yeah, it was in really great condition. So all I ended up doing was painting part of it with the Rust-Oleum chalk paint and chiffon cream. And then I didn't have to do anything with the original wood. I thought the color was really great. I didn't bother to sand it or stain it or anything. I left it as it is and I just, 
um, polished it up with a little bit of um, wood cleaner and I think the contrast looks amazing and I'm really excited for whoever ends up buying this piece. These products are awesome. I've used the Rust-Oleum chalk paint in a couple different colors and I absolutely love the results. This uh, top coat clear finish is super easy to use and I love that I can get away with just two coats with a really fast dry time, whereas other um, top coats, I feel like it takes more coats to get good results. But I absolutely love these two products. This chiffon cream is a beautiful color, really gives it that rustic farmhouse look. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to our channel. We do a lot of DIY home renovation type videos. And so if this was a video you enjoyed, definitely subscribe to our channel. Also, I have another channel I want you guys to check out. If you are into the DIY renovation stuff, I need you to check out my mother and father-in-law's um, channel. It's Maggie's Cottage DIY. I will link it down in the description below. But they uh, bought a house in Utah that it's 145 years old. And they bought it about 13 years ago. And they have slowly been uh, working on it, restoring its natural historic beauty. And you won't believe what they have done to this house. And you know, they are not electricians, they're not experts, they're not plumbers or anything, but they have just done all of this work themselves slowly over the years. But they have restored the history in this beautiful, almost 150 year old home. You will not believe it. But definitely check out their channel, subscribe to them as well so you can watch as they um, continue. They're still working on it too, but as they continue to restore that beautiful uh, Utah home. Again, it is Maggie's Cottage DIY.